In this part, we're going to fix the lighting and we're going to be creating fake surface tension for our fake liquid. Okay, first things first. We need to increase the light intensity for the backlight and for the gradient light, this one. Uh, so the background light has the power of 150, which feels like a lot, but it's just multiplying this almost black value by 150. You need to fix this by setting the color to 1, pure white, and setting this power from 150 to 20. And with the gradient light that's behind our dropper, we need to increase the intensity from 15 to 25. That's more like it. Also, we can fix uh, this edge uh, inside the glass shader. We'll go inside and here we have a priority. That uh, has to do with the order, how the refraction is calculated. Uh, just set it to 1. And here we are. That's a much more cleaner look. I would like to fix the top part. So the top geometry would, would react to the bubbles that are nearby the top surface. I don't want to sim it, I can just fake it. Dive inside. Call it bubbles. Sketch our bunch of points like thirty thousand. Create an attribute transfer, and we're gonna transfer an attribute from these points to our external surface, which is here. I'm going to subdivide it a little bit to get more details, more points on our external mesh, liquid mesh. Two subdivisions will do for now. Turn off the lighting. Okay. We need to create an attribute. Attribute create. So we're going to call an attribute mask. So the default geo is going to have a mask value of so 0, and the scattered points will have a values for mask of 1. Also, we need to kill these tons of unused attributes. We're not going to need them. Attribute lit. And check delete not selected. So everything that's not selected is going to be deleted, and we don't have anything selected, so it's Good. Okay, now we need to create a mask visualizer by pressing on it. There we are. The mask everywhere right now equals the value of 1 because the radius of transfer is huge. I'm going to set the distance threshold to 0 and the blend width to 0, 0, 1. Now we need to create some simple displacer. I'm just going to make an attribute triangle and set V at PY. So the position of Y plus equals our mask. So everything has been teleported by the value of 1, which is too much. Multiplied by 0 0.01. Just scale it down a bit. That's more like it. We also need to uh, fix these issues. We don't need to displace the side parts of the mesh. For this, we need to create a group. Group is going to be called top. Group type points. Base group and check. Keep by normals. Y value 1. Z value zero and reduce the spread angle like this 75 then we're going to create another mask call it 
I don't know, mask top, for example. Add with paid. Select the top group. Name attribute mask top. Set the value to one. Also, control middle click on the node and you can click on the mask top and automatically create a visualizer for it. Now we can see the top value is one, the bottom value is zero. Right now we can select the mask back on and multiply the mask by our attribute mask top. Now the side parts won't be displaced, which is nice. This is not a great part. We can fix this by blurring the mask top attribute, attribute blur, and select the mask top here. Delete the P. Okay. How the mask top looks after being blurred. Maybe we can decrease a bit the spread angle. but not by much. Okay, looks good. We can improve this thing by creating a ramp for our mask, channel ramp, mask, and our attribute mask. Okay, press this button. But now we can tweak the shape for our bulges. And change the interpolation type to this fine. As you can see, there are some weird artifacts happening, either the lack of points that are transferring the attributes, or it can be just fixed by blurring the mask attribute afterwards. Yeah, more points on the spheres helps this issue, and we're gonna blur it anyway. That would blur, just mask. Too much, maybe one. One iteration of a blurring. Maybe two. Nice. All right. So, since the points are being scattered on the geometry that's animated, they're gonna be placed at a different spots each frame. We don't want that, as you can see in this small bubble. I would like to rather avoid that because it can lead to artifacts later on. So we can use attribute interpolate to fix it. So just turn on output attributes, source prim UV, source prim and source prim UV. Connect the bubbles to the second input, connect the scattered points to the first input, and freeze time for our scattered points like this. So just type frame one, scatter points, interpolate them, and plug it in the attribute. Create. Now if we can look at the small spheres, they shouldn't animate. Yeah, so everything is pretty stable. Everything looks good. And our small displacer works fine. Ah, this is a mess. I plug these two. We have our spheres. And we have our liquid. 
and look like this. Let's see on the render. Looks a fair bit extreme. Maybe reduce the amount of displacement. 0 0.05. And we can move the spheres a bit higher. For example, just use the transform y is zero or zero zero three. That's fine. Also, the depth of field will help. Now it's turned off. And if we turn it on... Okay. Now, let's go back to the sim. We need to fix the uniform look of the sim. Maybe group some of the points. So... Not all of the forces would affect them equally. The simplest thing to do is just create a group. Call it... Bottom. Group type points, because it's the grains. And check base group, select by random chance. Say 40%. 40% of those were gonna float to the bottom. And say this is gonna be group top. Another seed. And another random 40% gonna float to the top. Okay, let's stick it here. Copy here, have an attribute, okay, have a group, something floats upwards, something floats to the bottom, these two, what did they do? Probably nothing, they just float, okay. Dive inside the vellum solver, and then a group, gonna Kill a noise here, amplitude zero, swirl size, doesn't matter. Select that this is group top, it flows upwards, but by a lower amount, 0 0.05. Top, another force gonna be bottom. Same thing, but the force should be, the force should aim downwards, so it's gonna be Minus 0 0.05. And another force, the third one, just gonna swirl the things around. So nothing's gonna be affected uh, with, in terms of gravity, but we have, we're gonna have noise. Amplitude 0 0.1, swirl size 0 0.0, pulse length 2. Blah, blah. Okay. Don't forget to change the group for bottom points to bottom. And let's sim it. The movement is a bit too violent. Maybe we should add pop drag and it's gonna calm things down a bit. Air resistance set to two. Pretty sim. Also, since we're gonna post on social media, I would suggest to change the frames per second from 24 to 30. Maybe increasing the subdivisions for the big spheres 
would help us to get some details. Come on, dog. Pull yourself together. Change the subdivision type to open subdiv loop. Maybe add another depth layer and check how it's behaving. And this is some fun motion for sure. Here. Doing. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay. So basically, we're ready to go. Oh, nice shape. So it was before, after. I think it's getting there. Probably there should be a bit more particles up on top here. But then again, it's the trial and error. I can just tweak it at home. Hmm, this is nice. Bull. So I guess that's it 